What do you think will happen in 08? Do you have any confidence for that, uh, for that vote to have any integrity? No, I don't know because I've now had eight years since 2000 to perfect corruption. It's totally perfected. They had the Diebold machine, they had white box, they had miscounted votes due to electronical devices going mad. They know, they know, they know how to do it, and they're going to do it. <laughs> I know it's going to be a totally dishonest election, and um, at some point the American people will wake up, God knows when. We do our best in our small ways to alert people. But when they do, they're going to be very angry. We lost the Republic, totally. Most of the Bill of Rights has been erased. The second we lost uh, habeas corpus in the courts, that means we don't have due process of law, which is what the whole country is based upon. What do you think of the idea of impeachment of President Bush? Because that, that is, I rarely hear anyone talk about impeaching Cheney, but it was always on talk radio or in op as is to impeach President Bush, yes or no. And some people say there's only like 18 months to go, let's just get him out of there, it'll take too much time, it won't be effective. Yeah, but he can get us blown up in the next 18 months. A wartime president, a wartime president. I mean, when that little thing starts to strut around, wartime president, there is no war. Why doesn't somebody stop him? Where's the war other than what you make? Yeah. What Bush has done is put every American at risk, wherever you live, wherever you work. You're apt to be blown up in the night by everything he's done wrong to enrage Islam, the Arab world. The Arabs didn't declare war on the United States. That is an invention of the uh, oil and gas junta, which is in control of our politics. They want us to believe that. They hate it when we, people like me compare them to Adolf Hitler, but they're just like Hitler. I was alive in the 30s. I was very much aware of what was going on. Hitler would always start out, Sudeten Germans are being murdered in Czechoslovakia. We must invade to save our fellow countrymen. Who's their fault? We must save them from the wicked Czechs. Czechs hadn't done a damn thing. He did the same thing with Poland. He did the same whenever he was on the attack. Now they have a new number. I see, you know, rooted village idiots like McCain. I mean, he should be put away somewhere. Talking about bombing I Iran. Yeah. Boy, he's so gutsy, you know. <laughs> he's a great hero because he was taken prisoner. Yeah, well, how did they get him as a prisoner? <laughs> what did he do wrong? What was wrong with his mission? They caught him. But they kept him in a box for several years. Didn't teach him a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think has been the biggest affront to democracy with this administration? Well, the fact that it has ne never been properly elected by the, the people. Fraud got them in in 2000 and 2004. Another fraud maintained them in power. So really, it's an illegitimate government. It was not the choice of the American people. American people don't make mistakes like that. We do dumb things. Or we, we're negligent often, but uh, we would never pick... Can you imagine George Washington being in favor of preemptive wars? Mm. That you attack your neighbor? We did that only once in our history before these jokers, and that was 1846 when we attacked Mexico in order to get California. Get California, and we're sitting in the middle of stolen Mexican land here. Luckily, the Mexicans are filling it up on their own, <laughs> so we may have to move on one day. Let's talk about this uh, this thing that uh, it, it is very important to me. Um, for many years now, for decades, you've been talking about America as an empire. Um, you, you were saying that in the 70s. Um, 60s. Okay, 60s. Um, let's talk about America and empire and, and make, make people understand that. Well, you have to begin by understanding what we are, or what we tried to be, which is a republic using electoral democratic processes to elect people, but uh, we were imitators of Rome. 
the great thinker who influenced Jefferson and Madison, the inventors of, the, of our republic, was uh, a Frenchman, philosopher of the Enlightenment, as they called it, Les Lumières. And he, what he preached was that you cannot maintain both a republic and an empire simultaneously. One or the other has got to go. So his advice was don't take on the empire part. Don't arm yourself to the teeth. Don't have enemies all over the place. General Washington was of that school. And he said, you know, nations like individuals must not have great affections or great hatreds elsewhere in the world. The nation only has one thing. It has interests. And as a republic, we have our interests. We have people, we should have good relations with everybody, do business with everybody. The founders knew perfectly well business was going to be our business. Not tooling around the world, building triumphal arches to ourselves. And then with 1846 and the Mexican War, we suddenly were in the empire business. And we never got out of it. And it had done us no good. So in 2007, with no money in the, in the bank, and a president that seems to find enemies everywhere and want to start fires all over the world, uh, the idea of empire, to me, at least, is that thing that crumbles and eventually falls over. Well, of course it does. And so where do you see America in that situation? Well, I, I have predicted, but I, my predictions are getting more and more wrong. I have predicted that it will take two generations to get the Republic back, which the Bushites got rid of. We have to get the habeas corpus back. We have to get due process of law. That, that you, can, you cannot be held, your money cannot be taken away from you, even with taxation. Uh, without due process of law. And that is the foundation, it's Magna Carta, it's the foundation of, of the Republic of the United States. It's gone. And nobody warned it. Where were the voices? If we had a non-corrupt media, the media, that was the media's task to explain this to people, but our media is totally corrupt and uh, totally in the service of the Bushites. The judiciary should have spoken out against the loss of the Bill of Rights. They all want judgeships. So they're waiting for a president, corrupt president, to make a corrupt lawyer, a federal judge. So they don't speak out. Who does? Writers for life. Biggest fools on earth, I can testify. <laughs> well, sir, I must say, I carry thousands of your words around with me all over the world in my trusty laptop. I have many of your books that have been read and reread, and uh, you're one of my heroes and one of my, my teachers. And it's, uh, it's fantastic to have you on the show. Thank you very much, sir.